I wanted to see how much more I can do as an actress and what are my abilities. I want to discover more, more, more and learn more skills and feel more. And I know that her, she's facing extreme circumstances That's, that might be not every day everyone could experience. I think I really have the passion for that. She's discovering herself, uh, not on the surface, but deep inside. Mm, when she thinks that maybe the perfect her in other people's eyes is that way, but then you realize eventually you can be that and you can be more than that. I think everyone is just so perfect for their role. I have to say that Jed, I worked with him uh, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. So good to see him again. He's really the perfect, um, perfect person for the emperor. And Gong Li, oh my gosh, she is my godness. I'm a fan. I I couldn't believe that at this time I'm I'll, I'll be work. I get the uh, opportunity to be work with her. So I just I'm just I was so excited and I said I always wanted to chat to her, but I have to remind myself. <laughs> that I have to focus on my, my work. I'm so thankful. I think she is an actor's director. She knows so much about acting, about how to express the right emotion, and she's pretty open to possibilities. Um, so when we rehearse, we rehearse before each scene. It could be go many many directions, mm, and she's always open with it. And I think we do share some qualities that we think will only um, show show the emotions and show the things that we really feel. We don't want it to be like. Uh, fancy or like big because I don't know if she agrees but I think that really the small um, details even a breath even a blink it means something especially on the the big screen yeah but I don't really like pay attention you know to really stand in front of mirror I say oh I oh but I think that I did build up uh, strength, the strength that I need to play the character. That's what I cared about, like how fast I can move um, and how I can use my strength to help with the, all the action sequence and even with the energy. And I think it really helped. Thankful the trainers. You see, because our armor, right, uh, we have different color represents different uh, groups of soldiers um, and the red for Mulan it works really well on screen and I think it represents passion brave and love uh -huh. I think Bina is really good at using color to tell the story there is a scene that uh, before Mulan go on her journey she took the final last look at her family. She thought she might die. So, and then I remember that scene she taught me. I said, why are we using this color? It's kind of a cold bluish, purplish uh, outfit, costume. And she said, yeah, I want to bring the, you know, the little smooth and maybe a little sad underneath it. Um, you know, quiet compared to the matchmaker scene that's happened before so it's a contrast mm, then I think I never thought about it it's it's something some information for me as well just being this movie it's Mulan it's Disney I grew up uh, with my daughter uh, my daughter grew up with me and it's the other way around you know but it felt like I was growing up with her uh, since she was uh, one one year old, she's 15 now. 
and I probably watched uh, the cartoon uh, animation mo mo more than a hundred times. Uh, I know all the tunes. Uh, so that's w one of the main reason why I want to be in this film. The second reason because, uh, and it is a very important reason because it's directed by a woman, Nikki, our director, as well as the movie is about a female hero. I think it's really important if any way I can support empowering women because uh, I think it's meaningful uh, in today's world. For this movie, I left it to our director, Nikki, because she is a woman with, uh, aside from her talent, she knows exactly what she wants. She envisions, she has this whole entire vision of the film, every character, uh, and she's very specific in every role. So I came in and kind of just kind of left it to her because I, as you see, I, I play, I've been in these films, these genre films, many, many times over, and similar characters, but never in a English language Disney type of place. And I want to see the results, you know, I don't want it to, I don't want it to uh, miss the surprise elements when I see the film. A commander, general, obviously very skillful, uh, teaches Mulan all the cool martial art moves, kind of like her mentor, teacher, father figure. I think there's a certain bond between these two characters, you know, obviously uh, to be her mentor or she, her character sees something in this, this character. Uh, Commander Tong, uh, not only for his skill, but also for his uh, wisdom, something that he uh, stand as a father figure to her, uh, away from her, the, the actual father. I think when they introduced uh, the character of Borokan to me, um, I kind of, I looked him up, I said, okay, I wonder if this is a real guy, and it actually it was there's reference to him in, in a lot of the history of the uh, the Roran, the the Mongolian uh, hordes and stuff, and the tribes. And I thought, well, how fantastic if you take it into a realistic approach that you know a historical figure. So I took it in, in, in that landscape, and uh, and I thought, well, it'd be fantastic if I get it because she's from she's a Kiwi and she's from uh, uh, Aotearoa or New Zealand. Um, she had a heavy influence from the Maori warriors, and so I think she was uh, thinking back to how she could bring that type of uh, uh, chi or that you know that type of mana, as we say in the Pacific Islands, um, to the character. And I think she was really engaged. And she she set me up with a, um, a kapahaka master who trains uh, in Maori martial arts, um, and sent me to him for a weekend. And so I spent um, a weekend down in Rotorua, um, training with him and getting to know, you know, some of the Maori warrior uh, ways and that the mindset that they had for uh, before they went into battle. Um, and a lot of times they battled to the death, so it, it brought in, into a very real place. Um, and I think that was um, very impacting, you know, for, to get into the psychology and the mindset that she's looking for. Borokan is, is a bit of a vigilante freedom fighter who is um, trying to regain his, his culture and, and his land back and also avenge um, his father's death. So there's a lot of um, um, effort for him to get the tribal elders uh, from the other tribes together so that they can unify. The tone of this movie is really, I think, the, uh, the courage and the compassion that the Mulan character has, and that she's, she makes a decision which sets her out on this um, adventure that, that could end up poorly or could end up you know, heroically, and it depends 
but I think that the drama lies in, in her encounters and her stumbles and things with, with that. And um, I think the end um, is it's very uplifting. And um, uh, I think is, is, is she becomes sort of this aspiration. And uh, I think that that's a, a good place to um, finish, you know, with, with, with an odyssey like that. Mulan's about a young girl, you know, disguising herself as a young soldier in order to protect her father, her family, as well as whole of China. And when she finally becomes true and reveals who she really is, she becomes the best warrior in all of China. Hong Hui and Mulan start off on the wrong foot in the conscription camp, but throughout the journey of their training, Hong Hui kind of sees something in Mulan that other boys doesn't. They don't have it. It's it's that in the leadership quality and the perseverance and how composed she is really. So she he sees something in her that. He goes, yeah, there's, there's something special about this young dude. And it was really cool being a part of, like, um, basically all Asian cast. And there's that immediate chemistry within all of us going, hey, I know your background. You know my background. I know how you grew up. Pretty much the same way, you know, Asian parents and whatnot. So there was just instant connection. We don't have to, we didn't have to even ask or say is that we like, let's go get some Asian food we all, we all love Asian food uh, we bonded a lot over food and just hang out and stuff like that and between me and the boys like June Jimmy Dua Chen uh, and Vincent there's a lot of you know instant bonding this brotherly bickering but end of the day we love each other we're like brothers Nikki is a legend. And when I found out I was working with her, it was like, oh my God, I'm working with Nikki Caro. And being with her on set, she knows exactly what she wants. You know, her, her vision is, is so precise. It just makes you, makes me feel very confident as an actor to know that I'm on a set and I trust this director so much because she knows what she wants. This character has always been something very important to the Asian American, you know, uh, uh, community, because of, of several authors that that really explore, you know, who this person was, this woman warrior, you know, uh, this, this, and and Maxine Han Kingston was one of those people who wrote the book The Woman Warrior, and uh, David Henry Huang, you know, who's written plays about the woman warrior, and there. Are, and, and you're talking about it became something that's within our psyche, within our consciousness, you know. And in order for, because of its prominence, we feel that it's important to, to, to tell the story properly. And I think we, we here have that opportunity to do so. Nikki is so generous, you know. She's not one of those people who will sit there and go, okay, I'm going to dictate what, what this character should be. Everything she does is from a discussion. And she's very clever that way. <laughs> she makes, she, she's very inclusive. She makes you feel that, you know, that you are part of this creative process. And we explore different ways of, of, uh, of presenting a particular scene. There's no right or wrong about pretend, pre presenting a, a particular scene. So we explore those possibilities. And what's, what, what develops is that she gives you a safe environment for you to take some chances. Ife fits this role to a T. She is Mulan. She has this kind of spirit, this kind of, she, she is special. You know, you, you can't, it's not just about God-given talent. And that's definitely there. It's really about her, her focus, 
her generosity. Um, she's always present. What drew me to this story was Mulan herself. And her journey from village girl to male soldier to warrior and, and hero was a story that had something for all of us and, and is as relevant and as resonant as it was when it was first written over 1,500 years ago. The vision for Mulan was to tell the story in the most epic and emotional way, but in a very real way with an updated vision, obviously, in canvas. Every moment Yifei was on set, she raised the bar. She inspired all of us. She broke our hearts. And she, our jaws dropped at the level of skill that she brought to this movie. Yifei is an accomplished martial artist. She can wield a sword. She can ride a horse. <laughs> She's a brilliant, brilliant actress. And as if all of that wasn't enough, uh, the girl can sing. So um, she is indeed not only the complete package, but definitely the only one that could ever have played Mulan. It was a, a career highlight to work with Jet Li. He brings to the role of the emperor all the gravitas that you would expect in the son of heaven but he also brings tremendous heart and soul and action so that when Jet Li's emperor leaves the throne to protect his people you know it is going to go down It was a joy working with the creative team. Many of them, um, most of them, are my longtime collaborators. And, and the one thing all of them have in common is that they're artists. They worked both individually and collectively on this vision. And at, at every moment uh, supported one another's work did deep, deep research into Chinese painting, history, cinema, so that we could bring the best version of this legendary story to life. The original ballad of Mulan was written in the seventh century and it's been told and retold countless times since then. In fact, in fact, Chinese children are all taught the Ballad of Mulan. So Mulan in China is, is, is very, very real and very important and very alive still after all of this time. Um, so it's such an honor and a thrill and a tremendous responsibility to bring her to life in a new way in a new time um, and I'm I'm so excited for audiences to uh, to experience this new vision of Mulan